yield the gentleman from Minnesota for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, uh, I thank you for the opportunity to speak, and, and to the gentleman from Pennsylvania, thank you for your energy, your passion, your vision, and all the folks who gathered here. Uh, Mr. Speaker, you're witnessing an all-too-rare event in this House, a group of bipartisan legislators coming together and working for the common good, putting the and rejecting the politics of division, rejecting the politics of of the false choices, the either-ors, and coming together with the respect and an understanding that this nation can innovate, can become energy independent. At the same time, we can protect those vital natural resources. You have a spectrum of folks that come from coal-producing West Virginia, from Pennsylvania, from Indiana, from California, from the plains of Minnesota. You have members here who have a wide spectrum of political beliefs, but you also have folks here who have been in the business of You've got folks speaking who are endorsed by groups like the Sierra Club. Mr. Speaker, this is what the American public is asking for. They're asking for us to get together, use our knowledge, collect information, use that data, come up with a plan that will do the things that you've heard talked about here. The very premise of this is just so simple. This land is your land. The idea that the riches of this land and the natural resources, if we use them wisely, if we take those revenues and reinvest, we can continue to do what we've always done, out-innovate, out-moving products to market. We can do it in a way that protects and has the grand, uh, the, the natural park system that we have in this country. We can have it both ways if we're smart, but it needs to start here. It needs to start with a plan. It makes no sense to anyone I talk to on the plains of southern Minnesota that we're spending over a billion dollars a day and sending it to countries that hate us. They will hate us for free. We can keep the money at home, reinvest in the infrastructure, make sure the outdated locks and dams on the Mississippi are up to where they need to be to quickly move those farm products from the upper Mississippi down to the Gulf and to the markets around the world. Those things can be done. The idea that we're reinvesting royalties, you heard each of our members talk about, this nation needs to make sure we're more efficient. We need to conserve on, on, on our energy needs, but to do so takes research. To do so takes investment. We have to upgrade our power grid. We have to make sure we're using smart grid technology and using the software and the technologies available to make sure we're using every bit of energy the most efficiently. We can take these revenues from the sale of the resources that are there, extract it in an environmentally sound manner, and take those back and put them into the research, to the infrastructure, to the, uh, to the ability to move forward. My district, for example, in southern Minnesota, we're very proud. We're the fourth leading producer of wind energy in this nation. You can see the beautiful windmill stretching across there and producing a large amount of our power. But the reality is Minnesota is one of the most coal-dependent states in the union because of the nature of where it's at. So we simultaneously need to make sure we're doing that in the most efficient, effective, and, and environmentally sound manner. At the same time, we're being realistic about what our power needs are. This nation and the world will become energy hungry like it's never seen. 50% more energy will need to be produced by 2025. We need to be smart on how we do it. The country that harnesses the innovation, that harnesses the ability to be energy independent, will lead into the future. We can't afford to fall behind. We can't afford to allow the resources we've been blessed with to be squandered and not used and invested for our children's future. So I have to tell you, as this has been being worked on, one of the, I think, to me, one of the most reassuring things about our great democracy is how this committee and, and, and this bipartisan energy working group have gotten together outside the constraints of existing uh, politics, outside the constraints of existing committees, and brought members, new members, seasoned members, uh, more liberal members, more conservative members, but with a very clear idea, making sure that we use our resource effectively, we become more energy independent, we diversify our energy portfolio, and we do so without raising a single tax and making sure our infrastructure is modern, making sure it is efficient and effective, and in the long run, making us more competitive. So the jobs that will be created by this, the ability to pay down the deficit that will be created by this, the sense of pride that we will have as a nation. President Obama back in March challenged us to reduce our oil imports by a third over the next 10 years. To meet that challenge, there is only one plan sitting on the table right now that has the ability to do that. That is this piece of legislation. So I have to say, um, it's very gratifying to work on this. I feel very much that the American people are hungry for a bipartisan, common sense, uh, 
ability to compromise where we need to, the ability to bring the, the, the right research to bear, the ability to aspire the American innovative spirit to get there and to do so with a set outcome. This is real. This isn't talk. This isn't like, oh, we should become energy independent. I hear a lot of people complain about coal all the time. Well, the reality of the matter is, if you're here today and complaining about coal, we need to turn the lights and the microphones off because they're being powered by that. And without another solution to that, we're not going to get any closer to what we'd like to see. Affordable, clean American energy powering our businesses, powering our homes. As the gentleman said, this isn't just an American dream. This could become an American reality, and it could start as soon as we get this thing moved through. So uh, again, to my colleagues, I thank you for putting the energy and effort into this. Uh, I thank the gentleman uh, for continuing to hold. Thank him for being ahead of the curve, as this group has been for the past several years, and the American public, we're getting right in lockstep with them what they want to see us do. So uh, I encourage, uh, I encourage my, uh, my colleagues, Mr. Speaker, and, and their constituents uh, to continue to engage on this, to talk to their representative about becoming part of this group. If you're really tired of the bickering and you're really tired about the gridlock and you're really tired about us not spending our money at home on our energy, on our ability to create jobs here, this is your solution, and you've got the spectrum of folks. It isn't a Democratic issue, not a Republican issue. So with that, um, I yield back to the gentleman with uh, great appreciation for the work you're doing. And I thank the gentleman from Minnesota for his comments.